Well, we're off to another event, this time up in the Wasatch Mountains. And uh, this is Provo Canyon up in the Wasatch Mountains. There's a beautiful valley on the back side of the Wasatch, uh, back side relative to Salt Lake City, uh, called the Heber Valley. And up one of the little canyons there is the town of Wallsburg. Right, and I've been past that turnoff of countless times on my way to Evanston and just never ventured up that road to even see where Wallsburg was. So let's check it out. Right. So we're attending an event up here, the Antique and Classic Power Museum's annual open house. This was originally a private collection of Richard Erickson. And he lived up here and he just, he collected stuff. Oh, him too, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but antique power equipment, uh, tractors, uh, hit and miss engines, automobiles, buildings. Yeah. He collected all kinds of crazy stuff and it's all up here on his property. And so now a group of volunteers have taken over the property and the collection. It's now a not-for-profit foundation. And uh, the, the volunteers up here have brought their own equipment. So some of this is stuff that's been brought in after the fact. Now one of the fun and interesting things collected up here was an amusement park railroad. Oh, isn't that neat? <laughs> and they've got a, a live steam engine here. I don't think it runs. They weren't running it and I don't think they can run it. But uh, I'd sure love to see this run. It looks like it's probably a 15 inch gauge. Could even be a 12 inch gauge. I, I know it has Utah history, so if anybody knows exactly what's going on with this, throw into the comments and let us know the history on this. Well, they had a train that was running, but by the time we hot-footed it up here, for some reason they quit running it. Darn it. <laughs> I know, our luck. And this, these were from Lagoon. Oh, and this was one of my favorite rides at Lagoon and you turn the crank and it went around on a seven and a half inch gauge track. How fun! Is that the best thing? No kidding! Oh, I, 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 if I, my knees were better and stuff and if they had it on a track I'd have jumped on. Absolutely. And they've got a sawmill here, a complete working sawmill with bleachers for people to sit. This is very much like the one we saw in Brooks, Oregon. Oh, very much like it. At, at Antiques Powerland. Here's a link to that. Exactly. And uh, you can sit up here in the bleachers and watch them cut. The one in Brooks, though, is 100% steam operated. Right. With like three different steam engines driving it. But they've got uh, just uh, an amazing collection of uh, logging stuff here, saws for a sawmill. Just be sure and bring your earplugs, and I'm serious about that because the noise is horrendous.
Now, one of the things that he and, and his wife were doing was collecting entire buildings. Sometimes they had to reconstruct the buildings, but in a lot of cases, they just moved the whole thing here. You know, what I see here is some ideas for the railroad. We could build some of these buildings ourselves to scale. This one was an automotive garage, and I like poking around in here because, my goodness, look at the, oh, knob and tube wiring in a meter. But check out all of this automotive stuff from back in the day. Some of it I even remember. Gotta go here. Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> Look at that. Wow, the whole thing is knob and tube. Yep. Yeah. Now you did complete knob and tube wiring on a couple of the structures on the railroad. I did. I find it fascinating that this was the way they wired houses back in the day. It's and on the locomotive shop, the, the meter is especially impressive. Now this is a Model T snowmobile conversion. Those just look fun. And we just did a show on this because there, there was a model of one of these in the GSL model car contest. And uh, so here's a link to a whole show on one of these things. We keep seeing a lot of silly posts on Facebook by people saying kids don't know how to drive a clutch. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Now, I want to take any one of those people and stick them in here and say, drive this. Right. What? Uh, what? Wh which one is the gas pedal? None of them. So what we have here is on the far right is a brake pedal. Pretty self-explanatory. On the far left is a clutch. Not self-explanatory at all, because if you push that all the way to the floor, that's low gear. If you let it all the way out, that's high gear. And if you hold it in the middle, that's the clutch in, that's neutral. Wow. Notice also that there is a stick shift. Model T's did not come with a stick shift, so this has been added. This is an overdrive uh, transmission or rear axle. And while the clutch is halfway in, you can select overdrive or underdrive, and it has a neutral position. Now that little button on the floor is your starter motor. Oh yeah, I remember cars having those. It's not a dimmer switch. It, it looks like a dimmer switch. That's the starter motor. Some people don't even know motor. what that is. <laughs> 
Now the gas, the spark advance, both of those are up on the steering wheel. And then the carburetor mixture control is on the dashboard. So I want to see these complainers climb in here and drive this thing. Because I used to drive these things all the time. Well, you and your brother, and I'm just happy they came out with electronic fuel injection. Yeah, no kidding. Let's just, what, there's nothing wrong with a modern world. You need a new radiator. So all kinds of different shops from all kinds of different eras. This is a malt shop. Oh, right. I mean, some of this stuff brings back memories. I must be getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the slot machines, but they no. were. And check this out, a print shop. Right. A full that. print shop in here. And the most amazing thing, this is the North Temple Shoe Shop. Isn't that something? Now, I remember this, it was always out there on North Temple and I would drive by it and just, and then one day it was gone. I thought they'd torn it down and it went, I was, oh, no, the whole thing was moved here intact. Right, and for me, this brought back such a flood of memories because I grew up around a shoe shop, namely my grandpa's shoe shop. And there was, this equipment was in that shop. And I just remember how noisy it was when my grandpa would fire up that equipment to repair shoes and the sewing machine to fix shoes with, sew buckles back on and such. But the big piece of equipment that my grandpa, he did not want me near it was, they called it a stitcher, but it's what they used to stitch soles onto shoes and it's really a powerful machine. Well, and I love the fact that you built a complete model of your grandfather's shoe shop for the railroad. Right, our railroad pays a, a lot of homage to some of our family members and friends. And I thought, what a wonderful way to reconstruct my grandpa's little shoe shop that I remember so well from being a little girl. Now I started building this shoe shop out of just some balsa wood and whatever I could find lying about the shop. I wasn't even really being serious about it at first, but the more I worked on it, the better it got. So here it is with the, the siding on it, and the windows are actually 3D printed. And here's my grandpa. Now, originally he started out as an Ozark miniature, and he was Engineer Bill. But I took one look at him, I thought, he looks just like my grandpa, and so I did some changing, and he became my grandpa Archie. Now back when I was a kid, we all was heating with coal and wood stoves, much like this one. And he had this one out in his shoe shop to stay warm. And there was a pile of coal outside and he would just bring it in. And that's how we kept warm. And in here is, a, I'm just testing him out with the equipment to see how well he fits and his shoe repair shop. And of course you can see where I had to recreate that stitcher in the background. Now I had to scratch build this and I have to confess I was using every conceivable part I could get my hands on because there just isn't one of these anywhere for sale or trade. And here's my version versus what my grandpa's would have looked like. And then here is the big grinding machine that would polish and grind the soles on the shoes to finish them off. And I remember that big breaker on the side when my grandpa would flip that on and the noise. But here is my version and my grandpa's would have looked very much like this one up here in this shoe shop. Now here's the sewing machine. Now it was like a big version, a heavy duty version of a Singer sewing machine. And that was used to stitch on things like buckles or repair a strap on a shoe. And here is the other version that's quite a bit like the one my grandpa had. So there's the two compared. 
Now the little sign there is just my addition. My grandpa never had a sign that said much of anything, but I do remember those cat's paw soles that he put on shoes. And of course, we always had a cat or two around grandma's house that would just come there to live and sleep on the porch, watch my grandpa work. Well, this shoe shop is sure a fun addition to the railroad. And finding this shoe shop up at uh, Wallsburg, I felt like I was walking into your grandpa's shoe shop after you talked so much about it and built the model of it. It was like, holy cow. There it is. Here it is. We are inside the shoe shop. Right. And the memories it stirs within me, things that just can't come back again, and yet you can model it and bring it back to life. Well, there was a, a lot more to see up here than just what we're showing here. Oh man, we ran around the whole day. And so we're actually going to take all the cars and split those off into their own show. Mm -hmm. So you want to look for that. Which is to say, if you're not a subscriber, you want to become a subscriber by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there is the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we're going to see you here on Tuesday. Right. Because we have something fun. Oh, yeah. See you then. <laughs> see ya. Bye bye. Bye.